What is your single message today to people about the declining rates of change that we're seeing in this virus? Is this good news? Well, I think that we better be careful about jumping to the conclusion that this is turning around, because when you look at the monitoring of infections, you sometimes see it go up and down. I'm glad to see that it isn't greatly accelerating, but the numbers of cases each day are still alarming. We're up to 45,000 total cases with 1,115 deaths. Mm. So I think we better be careful that as much as we want things to turn around, we may not have wishful thinking. We still have a very serious problem in China. Mm. And as we get more travel-related cases, the threat of this becoming right. more diffuse is great. Whether it is the bacteria of diphtheria or typhoid, the fears of another time, or viruses today, how do they disappear? How does a virus go away? Well, that's a very good point. What, what would happen in the absence of any uh, intervention like a very successful vaccine, which, as you know, historically has eradicated smallpox and eliminated polio from most of the world and a variety of other infections. But when you don't have an intervention, generally there are susceptible people in the population and those who are less susceptible. And when most of the susceptibles get infected, then they wind up, if it's a, it's a deadly virus, they'll either die, get sick and recover, and then they'll be protected so that the virus will have gone through the population, made a lot of people sick, killed some people, and then the rest of the population is essentially protected until new cohorts of babies who are born come into the population. So it's the natural dissipation of the virus. Okay, Anthony Fauci, talk to us about how you would monitor. I mean, how do we know if it's getting better or worse, given, as you say, that you, you could have you know, a better phase and then a worse phase? Do you monitor in, you know, how it gets infected? Yeah. Is it the, the, uh, the mortality rate? Like, what are the tools so that we can try and understand whether it is getting better or whether it's just temporary? Well, before you have sensitive diagnostic tests that you could widely distribute, we have a diagnostic test, so that's okay. But one that is easily distributed throughout the world, you really just count the number of cases that come to the attention of the medical community, and you count the number of deaths. So right now, the 45,000 cases that have come to the attention of the medical authorities overwhelmingly greater than 90 plus percent are in China. If you look at those, you can actually count. But the thing that often gets missed is that there are many more people who are infected, but they have either minimal symptoms or no symptoms at all. They generally don't get counted. So everyone feels rather confident that the total number of infected people are much greater than the 45,000 count that we're getting from China. In some respects, that's comforting news because that means that a lot of people are getting infected and are not getting very sick, even though the overall mortality, counting just the people who come to the attention of the medical community, is about 2.4 percent, which is very high compared to something like seasonal influenza, which is only 0.1 percent. So how would you, and I don't want to oversimplify it, doctor, but is it, you know, more dangerous than influenza, the annual influenza, but less dangerous than SARS? Is, I mean, would that be a fair way of describing it, or do we just not have enough facts right now? Well, well I think what you said just now is, is the truth, that there are still many unknowns, but given what we have right now, it is spreading rapidly. It is certainly more deadly than a typical seasonal influenza, but it is not nearly as deadly as SARS, which had a mortality of about 9 to 10 percent. But SARS did not spread as easily as this virus. For example, in an entire year, there were only 8,000 cases of SARS, which then just dissipated and went away. Right now, in the first two months or seven weeks, as it were, we have 45,000 cases. So, you know, we have like more than five times as many cases in a month and a half with this infection than we had with SARS in an entire year.